Hey everybody, it's Nelson Neverhurt. Uh, we're back with another musical tour of The Spiral, but something a little different. Uh, I wanted to get back to some Pirate 101 tracks. I've had some people uh, request them. And this is one that came up uh, quite often. This uh, is the Marleybone Beachhead. Uh, and I wanted to thank everybody for their patience waiting for these to come out. I know they've been uh, slower than molasses in the middle of January. Uh, I was working on the new Wizard World of Caramel, so that took a while to do. And then I also got a new computer after that, and I've been trying to get it back up to speed for doing these kinds of projects. Okay, to be honest, I don't always know the exact locations of where these tracks eventually get placed. You know, I read the rundowns of, of the stories and the emotions and the, the missions that are going on. The description I got from King's Isle was, this is the climactic point of the player's journey for this section. You have come upon the Death Star, if you will. This should have that battle against the Imperial Army feel, menacing and powerful. A driving force pulling you into battle with confidence and little trepidation. You feel the warrior surface through this dark thread. So that's what I was given uh, as inspiration, and this track, I have remixed it a little bit. I've got some new uh, libraries that I'm trying to incorporate into it, so I, I am kind of using this as, as a little bit of a guinea pig for some of these new libraries. So we'll listen to the track and then come back and talk about it. And normally I'd say there's the loop. However, <laughs> I actually put an ending on this track for once. Um, this is a little bit what John Williams would do in the Star Wars score. There I go with my John Williams again. Um, at the end of a lot of his cues, he would just kind of break it down to a low note. And then the music editor on the film could kind of take that long extended sustained low note and mix it into another cue. All right. So, uh, yeah, M you know, military march kind of idea and the Valencian army. Um, I always envisioned them as the uh, cricket army from Douglas Adams, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. And the cricket robots were always just like these really just cold, white, sterile, you know, heartless killing machines that were built for one purpose. I wanted to get a little bit of the clanking military idea. So here's the clanking sound. It's not mixed up very loud. It'd be more of a background vibe than anything. Here's the uh, marching kind of footsteps.
if you're doing any sort of sound design stuff like this, to you, you want to try and keep it from getting too repetitive. So I had a bunch of different steps, four of them, right? One, three, two, four. And I just sort of mixed them up so it didn't sound like the same step every time. There are so many strings here. Um, I... I, it might be a problem, but I fall, I fall in love with just getting things sounding bigger and more epic. And I like these, all of these string patches for different things. So this one, uh, this one that we're starting with, this is the project Sam Symphobia, uh, string ensemble short notes. My go-to because I've, I've had this library for a long time and I know what it's good at or at least types of parts that I write that I think it's good at is these uh, uh, short spiccato notes. So that has a lot of uh, power and presence. On top of that, I pulled in these violas and it's the full spiccato patch from LA Scoring Strings. And I really like sound of the rosin on this uh, bow scratching across the string. I think it gives it a little more definition. And it's also a little, it's a, just a little warbly, which gives it a little realism there. So both of them together are there, here. It's in there, but it's subtle and it's mostly just kind of the definition. I also have from the LA scoring strings, the cellos, the spiccato cellos. And it's the same reason, it's just kind of lower in the range, right? So all of them together. Most of the bodies coming from the Symphobia and then a lot of the definitions coming from the LA Scoring Strings. And then the string ensemble from Cine Samples is the new uh, guy in there. And mostly I'm just trying to learn how to mix those. This is the March rhythm, right? Da, 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 da. And marches are usually kind of in two because, you know, left, right left right if you blend the timpani in there it, it helps with the definition a bit uh, something else to think about when you're writing parts like this is that the higher strings are going to have uh, an easier time speaking uh, on faster parts so that those triplets the da 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 you'll notice that the low octaves are only playing those half notes there you have to consider the mechanics of the instruments or if you're because that's what you're emulating right so uh, and then over top of that little ostinato passage going on we've got the brass chords So kind of a nice mast sound. Uh, this was the Project Sam brass that I used a lot for these kind of warmer bits. Which I think sounds good and, and real in a mix in a lot of different ways, but I'm, I've been looking recently for something just a little bit warmer. So I replaced that uh, some Phoebe brass with the the Heaviosity Forzo brass. And then I also back that up, uh, the trombones from Cine Samples from the Cine Brass Library. So you'll notice that it, it's the same as the Cine Strings library where sustain pedal is down then it's been it's playing sustain notes if the uh, sustain pedal is up then it's going to play shorter staccato notes and the way that they've programmed them the softer you hit them the shorter and more geekier the notes are that's a word right geeky But it's always a uh, challenge because exactly how long they are and how long the uh, sustain uh, notes take to speak compared to the staccato notes taking taking to speak. Sometimes you have to tweak that around, kind of get out the microscope and 
uh, do this stuff. Here's the sustain pedal. So it's counterintuitively when it's up, it's the sustain pedals down. So it's on. And that's when the long notes are happening the sustain. And then I let the pedal up and then play the really short note. And then between it's, it's not very much time, but between, you know, the attack of that note and then the attack of the next sustain notes, you got to get the sustain pedal down. So a lot of times if it's too short, like it is in this passage here, I will go in later, you know, just with the mouse and, and move those around to make sure I got them in time. Cause playing, you know, usually when you're playing like a piano, the sustain pedal exactly when you, you know, slam it to the ground is not super critical, but here it obviously is. So it's also sort of counterintuitive to play, uh, with a light velocity when you're trying to play like a nice little short staccato note. So a lot of times I'll grab these and pull the sustain down too, just to make sure they're nice and, uh, geeky short. Again, that's a word. Uh, so with that Cine Samples uh, trombone patch and the Heaviosity uh, Forzo Ensemble patch, it's, it's a nice thick, warm sound. Little bit of discrepancy uh, between, you know, some of those staccatos in uh, the one patch and the other one, but probably comes out in the wash. This to me uh, sounds a lot like some of the stuff I did in Dragon Spire, some of these odd harmonic progressions. I always find a harmony that doesn't commit to being minor or major, it's more interesting harmony. Uh, about halfway into this, the uh, snares come in and this is another I swear they don't pay me, but this is another Cine Samples library. This is a Cine Snares, which is actually, I, I think it's been discontinued because this is probably part of their uh, Cine Percussion library, this older library. And that's, that's the sound that I had when I was writing it. So I kept that. So sort of four chords into that, it changes and we bring in the snare. <laughs> Toms come in. More Cine samples, all right. So these are called, uh, this is from a library called Drums of War, which I think they had some guys from like the Lord of the Rings sound team which, I mean, if you're looking for somebody that knows their slam and low orc percussion, those guys probably know what they're doing. Oh, so sorry, the Toms of War are from Cinetoms too. Again, like Cine Snares. Um, there's a lot of really great patches in this library. And then the Drums of War, um, just a lot of really big, heavy percussion in kind of a neat package that lets you adjust the EQ. You know, it's, it's not frequencies, it's boom, body, and head, which is kind of a cool descriptions of that. You'll notice that I've panned them out each slightly to its own side. They're kind of similar sounds. So I move one of them to the right side, one of them to the left side, just a little bit to kind of get a little, little separation on them. And the, the climb here. So here I've got the cellos and the uh, bassoon, which is always like a nice meaty sandwich. They really reinforce each other, you know? Nice and woody and reedy. I it's it's fun because I don't I don't have like a, a range chart you know, in my head where I go, oh, and then at this point the bassoon goes down. Um, just being able to explore the range of the instrument, you know, uh, the bassoon sounds fantastic kind of in the higher clarion register, the right of spring, you know, I'm not an English horn. This note's too high for me. It just has its own plaintive wailing cry. Uh, and then it all, but it also does so good down lower, uh, getting closer to the kind of country bassoon range. bassoon and cellos together and then All right different vibe there so that's fun a little mushy in some parts which is why uh, this these patches are definitely helping them out Thank you. 
So really what's happening is it's, it's just sort of ascending, right? We're, we're getting a lot of, uh, we're building the tension by kind of everything sort of slowly moving up. It's really more about uh, the rhythm and the shape here because you can hear the echo, you hear the first uh, part of this phrase, and then you hear the uh, low strings and brass kind of echoing it, the, the rhythm anyway. Da, 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 right? A little higher. And that's, this is development of an idea, right? You just sort of play around with it, present it in a different way, see what comes out of it, bringing every piece of the orchestra into it, really giving every combination of instruments a chance to, you know, mess around. It's the most exciting for me to, you know, to hear an orchestra doing that where you hear this material and it's, oh, now the trumpets are doing it. Now the, um, you know, the low reeds are doing it. I think it's just a, a really effective technique to uh, build some tension here. <laughs> I knew better than to solo the harp part. <laughs> All right, so this is just me getting fluttery on the on the harp part. I'm actually in the market for some new harp sounds, so I don't know if you guys have any suggestions, but please feel free to drop those in the comments. This is uh, right. You can hear my intention there. I always put more slop into the harp because A, I think you can get away with it, and, and B, I mean, it's so pretty sounding. I, I like writing these kind of string parts. It's really just, you know, arpeggiating through the chord. It's a more interesting way outlining the harmony, I think, than just sort of your, you know, bigger block chords down here. So here, this is taking an idea, you know, da, 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 and then modulates into a different key, but moves into sort of a quieter presentation of those ideas. Yeah. So again, passing ideas back and forth between different sections. It's it's a great way, you know, when you're trying to come up with material and fill some space, it's like, okay, well, you don't have to, to write a new rhythm or melody or, you know, chord progressions for the whole thing, you know, take what you've got and take a little time to explore it, I think, through there. So then in this next section, I'm kind of getting back to the original key and trying to get back to the original groove without making it sound quite so obvious that, I, that I'm getting there. So it, it's hard in a looping uh, tune to make it feel like it has some development, right? Because by definition, it's just going to be repeating over and over again. So you have to sort of make the the beginning of the tune sound like where the end of the tune is leading. And therefore, maybe the listener doesn't notice when it loops back to the beginning. <laughs> Sounds like it's breaking down again for another onslaught here. And then I just turned that uh, triplet rhythm around a little bit to get this uh, this ending in here. Um, so hopefully that's interesting. We talked a little bit about uh, you know trying to pass an idea around through the orchestra. Um, using I, I'm using a lot of different libraries to get <laughs> you know, to get a sound that's really big. Um, I actually knew of uh, another composer who basically takes even the same sound and he just replays the thing like, you know, three or four times, you know, with the same sound to try and make it sound like, you know, a big enough uh, string section or whatever. So remember to click all the boxes and do all the things. Uh, let me know uh, if you'd like seeing some more Pirate 101 things. I think that would be uh, fun to do. And if you haven't, uh, I'm doing another series on an older game uh, that I wrote called Vex, which, I, which Respawn Records actually just released on vinyl. Just Still crazy. So go check that if you haven't had a chance to do that. And I'll uh, you can maybe see where some of my some of my technique came from. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. See ya.